What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and in this video I wanna talk about building self-confidence for powerlifting. So, when you're new to anything, uh, you're going to be bad at it, especially relative to people that have been doing it for a long time. That's just part of the process of learning a new skill, doing a new sport, playing a new instrument, doing any new activity, is that there's a learning curve. You know, th there's almost no exceptions to this, right? So, here's the thing, a lot of times, people tend to choose confidence strategies when they're new at something that rely completely on just delusion or blind faith or faking it till you make it, right? And this can work to a degree, but it sets you up for having an extremely fragile state of mind. So if you set yourself up, you know, if you're a new lifter and you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to be world champion one day and that's where you derive all of your confidence from the problem with this and i'm not saying you shouldn't have grand goals especially having grand goals in the back of your mind or something that you want to one day possibly achieve but the problem with drawing your confidence from a belief like this having you know because this is let's face it this is kind of what those motivational videos and stuff tell you to do you know shake the haters off and believe in yourself no matter what but here's the thing when you're new, there is just absolutely no evidence yet that you are a good lifter, that you should have any confidence in yourself. That that evidence is not there. So you, there's really two ways to go about this. And one is, again, like I said, you can try to create some delusional sense of self-confidence based on nothing but faith and belief. And there will have to be some element of that at least, but in my opinion, the much better way to build your self-confidence in really anything, not just powerlifting, is to collect experiences that demonstrate to yourself, that demonstrate to your brain that success will one day be possible and that if you follow the process, predictable results are the outcome. So, of course, if you've never done a training cycle before, you have no reason to really believe that your strength is going to increase predictably like the person who wrote the program tells you that it is. Now, thankfully, strength training does work in pretty much almost everybody. So anybody that runs a basic novice program will experience the feeling of being able to add weight to the bar every time they go to the gym for a little while. And this is the first step in building self-confidence is just seeing that it works. Just seeing that you set your mind to a goal and then you achieve that goal. So the best way to build self-confidence, in my opinion, is not to focus on these grandiose goals and convince yourself that you're one day going to be this super special athlete, but rather just focus on short-term and medium-term goals that are achievable, things that you can gather evidence that shows that it's possible in a realistic time frame. So now if you set the goal of increasing your bench by five kilos in three months, Along the way, you're going to have rep PRs that show that it's possible. You know, you're going to make progress throughout your program that shows that it's possible. And over the course of, you know, five, 10 years in the sport, doing 10, 20 meets, if you accumulate all of these short and medium term wins, things where you said, you know, I want to improve on my total from the, the last mock meet, from the last meet, I want to do this or that, and you followed your program and you got these results, you'll start to build a framework of reference experiences that you can draw upon to prove to yourself, to prove to your brain that what you're saying is not unrealistic and that you should have confidence in it. Because here's the thing, confidence should not be based solely on ideas, especially in the real world. Confidence should be based on the fact that you know, you've been there and you've done it. You've seen it. You know that you're, what you're saying is probable and possible and realistic because you've got a million experiences that tell you that it is. And honestly, there's a big part of this that really cannot be faked. You know, I know that there's people naturally have more confidence than others, but the bottom line is that, you know, you can slowly build this up over time. And when, in so doing, you will eventually incrementally get closer to those bigger grandiose goals, like say becoming world champion or one day being the best lifter in the world or, or whatever. And that's because with all of those wins behind you, if you eventually get to a point where, you know, you are within a competitive distance of the other lifters in your weight class for the world championship, 
telling yourself and convincing yourself that you're going to be world champion will have a lot more meaning behind it. It'll be a lot easier to buy in because you'll look at your competitive track record thus far and see all the times that you improved your total, that you got better and better placings over the years, that you won a local meet, and then maybe you won a regional meet. But the bottom line is that this confidence will be based on actual experiences rather than just, you know, amping yourself up through delusion and arrogance and just generally being naive. And again, I'm not saying you shouldn't have big goals in the back of your mind, but instead focus on the short term and medium term goals that you can measure, that you can definitely accomplish, and then accumulate a ton of those. Accumulate as many wins as you can, small wins, medium sized wins, big wins, and over time I promise you that each that this that each subsequent goal will get larger and more meaningful in the context of the sport as a whole and not just in your personal journey with it. But I suppose the bigger point that I want to make is that if you want to build confidence, you can't rely solely on fake it till you make it. You actually have to get experiences in the real world that prove what you're saying is not total bullshit. And the only way to do this when you're new at something and you're bad at it relative to people that have a lot of experience is to set short-term, realistic goals about beating yourself. And really for your first years in the sport, unless you're just one of those lucky people who's almost immediately competitive, your short-term and medium-term goals should always be about beating yourself. And as you accumulate these wins, over time it'll be easier to convince yourself, to convince your brain to be confident at that next meet, because why shouldn't you be? You already have 10, 15, 20 meets where you did exactly what you said you were going to do, you followed your plan, you executed your plan, and you got the result you were looking for. But again, go out and do the sport for years and get the experiences. Don't try to blow your confidence up based solely on fake it till you make it and delusion. It's just not the best way to go about it. Anyways guys, Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, good luck with your training and have a nice day.